So at some point or another, every DIYer is going to need to test an electrical outlet. Whether you're installing a new receptacle or you're trying to track down a wiring issue, an outlet tester is one of those tools you just can't do without. Not only can it help to keep you safe, but it also saves you time and helps you to avoid costly mistakes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to easily and quickly test your outlets with four different Klein testers. I'm gonna show you exactly what each tester is capable of, how to use them safely, which one is the best for your specific needs, and also what features will help you get the job done faster. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so just really quickly, these are gonna be the four testers that we're gonna be taking a look at. We're gonna have them going from basic to advanced. Obviously, the more advanced we get, the more expensive they're gonna get. We're gonna take a look at what each one has to offer, how they work, and how each one of these can be effective for you depending on what job you're trying to do. So all of these are Klein tools. The first one is the RT210. This one here is the RT250. Over here, this much larger one, this is the ET270. And then this one over here, here, which has a ton of stuff on it and can really help with troubleshooting issues is the RT390. All right, so let's start out with what is going to be the most basic option. And this is the Klein Tools RT210 outlet tester. It only costs around 10 to $15. Oftentimes it comes in like if you buy a multi-tester pack, a lot of times it's gonna come in that. So let's go ahead and plug this into this GFCI outlet right here. And as you can see, these two right lights are on. And what this is telling us is if we pull this back out of here, if we flip it up to the top here, this diagram here is going to show you what each one of the light combinations means. So we had the two right lights on. If we look down here at the bottom, that is showing us that everything is wired correctly. But this thing is also able to detect issues with wiring such as open ground, open neutral, open hot, a hot ground reverse, and a hot neutral reverse. So if we come down here to this receptacle that's below the GFCI and we plug this in, let's see what we get here. The two left lights are illuminated. If we pull this out of the receptacle, as you can see right here with the two left lights being illuminated, that is letting us know that we have a hot neutral reverse. And what a hot neutral reverse means is your hot wire is actually on the neutral side of the receptacle, so on the silver colored terminals, and the white neutral wire is on the hot side, which would have the brass colored terminal screws. I wanna show you how it can easily test a GFCI receptacle just by pushing this button right here. So I'm just gonna reinsert it back into that GFCI. It's plugged in, letting us know our wiring is correct. All we need to do then is then push the black button on top, and as you can see, pushing that button, the lights instantly went out on the GFCI. So now we know by doing this test that should there be a ground fault, this GFCI should trip as it's intended to do. So if you are just doing simple outlet checks or installing a new receptacle, then this is really a no brainer to have, especially if you're newer to doing DIY electrical projects. Moving up a notch, we're gonna take a look now at the Klein Tools RT250 outlet tester. This one will run you around 15 to 20 dollars but the way that it works is this one actually does have batteries inside of it so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and turn it on by pushing the power button so i'll go ahead demonstrate this for you go ahead and plug it into this receptacle as you can see the green light is illuminated so it's telling us that everything is wired up correctly but where it is very different from the very basic rt210 is it's actually showing us what our voltage is digitally as you can see we're getting 122 volts which is good. And it's also not just showing us the green light that everything is correct, it also shows us correct on the screen. This also has a GFCI tester on it. So let's go ahead, simulate a ground fault here and see what it does on this particular device. All right, so as you can see, our green light is now blinking. We have now simulated a ground fault and very briefly, it's showing us where our last voltage was, which was 122 and that 0.01, that is letting us know how long it took for the GFCI to trip when the ground fault occurred, or in this case, the simulated ground fault occurred. So it was saying it reacted in only 0.01 seconds. And that's exactly what we want to see. That is almost instantaneous. But now let's see what it does 
does when we plug it into the receptacle that we know has a hot neutral reverse. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. As you can see, the red fault light is illuminated, showing 123, 122 volts, which is fine. But then as you can see right here, it says hot neutral reverse. So again, it just displays everything that you need to see here on the screen, as opposed to going back to a chart, looking at what each one of the lights means or the combination of lights. It also had the added information when we did the GFCI test of exactly how long it took that GFCI receptacle to sense that ground fault. A lot of great information, very easy to read, not a whole lot more expensive than the more basic RT210. Like always, for your convenience, I'll have this tester along with all of the other testers you're gonna see in this video. I have links for everything you see down in the video's description down below. So at any point, if you wanna check them out, you can just click on those links and it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on. But if you would like something with even more versatility, let's now talk about the Klein Tools ET270. This is a GFCI tester with a multimeter. This one is a bit more expensive. It's around $50 to $60, but it combines an outlet tester with a basic multimeter, which makes it a great all-in-one tool for a lot of your DIYers. But we said this is an outlet tester, so I'm gonna go ahead, connect the plug to the ET270. It slides in just like that. All I need to do is turn this dial over here where you see the receptacle face and now it's ready to be an outlet tester. So then all I need to do, take my plug, plug it into the receptacle. And as you can see on the screen, we're getting 121 volts showing it's alternating current. Everything is wired up correctly. We also have this green light down here letting us know that everything is correct. This thing to make it a little bit easier to read, you can also turn on the backlit display, makes it a lot easier to read actually. And like the others, we've got our GFCI test right here. So let's go ahead, push that button and simulate a ground fault. All right, so as you can see, it was at 121 volts. And again, like the last one, it's showing 0.01 seconds. But of course, let's test our bad receptacle down here, see how it reads out on here, plug it in. And you can see that light went to red instead of green. It beeped at us to alert us that there is an issue, showing 122 volts. And again, down here at the bottom, it's showing a hot neutral reverse. So again, all your information is there when you're testing your outlets. But now let's show how you can very easily test a nine volt battery. Connect my probes to the proper ports. Instead of having it on the outlet setting, I wanna move it over here to the battery nine volt setting. All right, so now you can see we're in battery mode and it's gonna be looking for DC, which is direct current instead of alternating current. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my black probe, put it over here on the negative side, then take my red probe and put it to the positive side. And as you can see, this thing is all over the place. Now we're at like 1.2, one volt. So this nine volt battery is very much bad and needs to be thrown away. But then if we take this battery here, put my black probe on the negative, red on the positive, and it's testing out to right around 9.2 volts, which is exactly what you wanna see. So in this case, it's a nine volt battery. So if you're showing a reading that is more than 10% below nine volts, then you know it's time for it to be replaced. This particular nine volt, it was completely obvious that it needed to be thrown out because as you can see, the screen is just jumping all over the place and we're down to only one volt. So again, it's great for checking batteries as well. And of course, since you have your probes, and again, it can be more of a standard multimeter, you can turn it over here. You got voltage alternating current. You've got voltage direct current. You can also flip it over here to see if you've got any continuity. So as you can see, I'm putting my two probes together. It's beeping at me and it's showing me that we have continuity. And of course you can also ohm everything out. So it's kind of a three in one, an outlet tester, a battery tester, and a basic multimeter. Pretty much everything that your typical DIYer and homeowner is gonna need for most of your home applications. But now let's get into our next. This is the Klein Tools RT390. But this isn't just an outlet tester. It is also a circuit analyzer and it's going to be around that hundred to hundred and twenty dollar range So this is really going to be for somebody that is wanting to do more advanced troubleshooting because this particular outlet tester really is top of the line It's not just doing your basic stuff It does all the stuff that all of the other ones do aside from the last one I showed you It does not have a multimeter function on it but as far as outlet tester It does everything that all the rest do but it's also able to detect if you have issues somewhere on your circuit in the wiring 
wiring, whether it's with the wire nuts, your connection points or your splices, the wiring itself. And we're gonna get into that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and fire this thing up just by pressing and holding the power button. So let's go ahead, plug it in and see how everything shows up on the screen. So as you can see, again, very bright colored screen. It's showing 122.7 volts. That's great. It's energized and everything is correct. I'm just gonna really quickly just simulate. It can do a GFCI test. So you just have to push the GFCI button. And now it gives us a lot of information here. So it was a GFCI test. The pre-trip voltage was 122.7. The trip time was 35 milliseconds. That's incredibly, incredibly fast. That's definitely in the range of where you would want to be. And the trip current that it used in order to do so was 8.1 milliamps. But this is where things get really interesting. This is probably the main reason that pay the price that it costs for this particular tester. I've got this set up in a way right now to where it is going to give us a reading that we would not normally want to get. And the reason it's gonna give that is because the way that I'm supplying power to this mock-up wall, I have it plugged into an extension cord. This is about a 50 or 60 foot extension cord and it's only a 16 gauge extension cord. So this is a 15 amp circuit. So the wiring is undersized. So you're gonna see exactly what happens when you're getting resistance and a load put on to a certain circuit. So all I gotta do is go ahead, push the load button. And yeah, as you can see, it's giving us all of our loads here. We've got our unloaded voltage. So before we did the load test at 122.6, and now you see all of this is in red. When you see the red on here, that is not good. Anything above 5% voltage drop is gonna be highlighted in red. When it put 12 amps of load on this receptacle or on this circuit, it dropped it to 115.6 volts. Not the worst thing in the world, but also not ideal and could be pointing to an issue. And again, and that's only at 12 amps. This is a 15 amp circuit. When it did 15 amps, it dropped to 113.9 volts, almost 114 volts, and that is a 7% drop. Now you're getting into that territory where you really need to start paying attention. Not that you shouldn't with the 5.6, anything over five you should, but as you can see, it just gets incrementally worse the more load that's put on it. Now, obviously when it put 20 amps on it, nothing about this circuit is rated for 20 amps. It had 111 volts with that load put on it, which is a 9.4% drop. So this is some incredibly valuable information for anybody, but especially those of you that want to make sure you're able to do troubleshooting around the house, or I should say around the house with your electrical and checking all of your receptacles. Because if this was not set up to fail like I have it right now, then this would be concerning and I would be checking each one of my receptacles, my connection points. I want to make sure that I don't have any loose wires or wires that are not tightened down enough. If a wire, for instance, on a receptacle on the terminal screw is a little bit loose, that can be helping to cause that resistance and that can cause a lot of heat and therefore issues. Obviously loose connections can lead to arcing, fires. So again, this is a very big deal. And again, why you pay the money for this particular receptacle tester. But I just wanna really quickly show you, this is the receptacle that I have the extension cord plugged into that is powering the mock wall that we were just testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this extension cord and then I'm gonna plug it into the receptacle. So I've got it plugged into that receptacle I'm just going to go ahead and hit my load button again. And as you can see, nothing is in red here. We have at a 12 amp load, 120.6 volts, more than enough. At 15 amps, 120.1 still more than enough. And then even at 20 amps on this 15 amp circuit, we do have that slightly below at 119.2 volts or at most 2.8% voltage drop here. So this is what you want to see when you do this load test. And when you do see this, that's when you know you can move on to the next one and you don't have to worry about this particular receptacle. And of course, just like with the other outlet testers, if we plug it into this one that we know we have an issue with, as soon as we plug it in, showing voltage and in red, hot and neutral reversed. So just wanted to quickly show you that it does show faults as well. So what is my opinion on all these different outlet testers? Well, for instance, in my opinion, the Klein Tools RT210 is very basic. It's an affordable choice for quick outlet checks. And honestly, it's a no brainer if you are just starting out. The RT250 steps it up with a very clear LCD and also included that GFCI trip time, which really does make it great for troubleshooting purposes. The ET270 is, in my opinion, just the best of both worlds if you're needing an outlet tester and a multimeter in one. And it also has that added function of being able to check your everyday batteries. 
And then the RT390. Again, this is the premium option for having some advanced diagnostics. And this is gonna be perfect for serious DIYers or pros that are wanting to troubleshoot a little bit more advanced problems, or you're just wanting to be diligent and making sure that you don't have any issues in those electrical boxes and in your walls. So I guess it doesn't come down to just really serious DIYers or pros. It really depends on where you feel like you fit in. But again, obviously this comes with everything with those advanced features that I can see a lot of people wanting as well. But in my opinion, for most homeowners, I would probably recommend going with at least the RT250 just because of its balance of features and price. Or in my opinion, if you're somebody that doesn't have a whole lot of electrical tools anyways, or you're just wanting something that's a little bit better, not terribly priced and can do quite a bit of things. In my personal opinion, if there was one that I was going to pick that is just the best of all worlds, then I I would go with the ET270. And again, this really comes down to depending if you don't have a multimeter already or you just wanna have one tool that combines all of them together. But regardless of all of that, I will have links for all of the testers and everything you saw in this video down in the video's description down below. So when you click on those links, it'll take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check them all out for yourself. And if you found value in this video, then you will definitely find value in another video that I did in the past where I talk about the one electrical tester that can replace pretty much all of them. It is a jack of all trades and has some features that most testers simply don't have. So if that would be of interest to you, all you have to do is click on this video right over here and it'll take you directly to it. But I hope that you found value in this video. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one.